What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be talking about Paul Rudd, the man that People Magazine recently named the sexiest man in the world. I'm gonna be discussing why I think that's the case, and then I'm gonna be discussing what I think we can learn from that, and what we as men can really do in order to make ourselves just that little bit sexier. Because let's be honest, that's something we all want just a little bit, right? So the first place to start is that Paul Rudd winning this award really does show that there is a market for nice guys. There's a narrative and there's something that I know a lot of men say and a lot of men tend to think. And that thing is that women don't want to date you unless you're an asshole or unless you're a player or unless you're that little bit of a bad boy. The reality is of course that some women are attracted to that and some women do want to date that. But if you're the type of guy that's going after those type of women and you're not a bad boy, you're not an asshole, it's never going to work for you. So I'd really suggest that you reevaluate what you're looking for and you reevaluate why you're trying to find that. But if you're a genuinely nice guy, you should feel really comfortable using that and you should feel really comfortable leading with that as a big part of your attraction. But the crux and the way I caveat that is something that I think needs to be said a lot more. You need to determine whether your behavior comes from genuine nice guy or nice guy syndrome. And I've actually recently shot a video on nice guy syndrome because they're two very different things. One of those comes from being a genuinely good guy who wants to benefit and make the difference to the person that he's interested in, and the other one tends to come from insecurity and a need to feel validated. And that is, of course, what nice guy syndrome really tends to look like. Paul Rudd is a really, really interesting example because when I saw that he'd won an award, I actually spoke to a couple of female friends about it to ask what they thought and why they thought Paul Rudd won the award. And the first thing that they all said is that Paul Rudd comes across as very kind and Paul Rudd comes across as a gentleman. Of course, when I say that, I'm talking about how he appears and how he appears in films without actually knowing him. But I think it's still a very valid point. This is how he comes across and this is why people are attracted to him. But if you want to lead with being nice and being a great guy as the main part of your attraction, it has to come from a genuine place and it cannot come from a place of nice guy syndrome. So look at it, work out why you're being nice. Is it genuinely who you are or are you doing it from your, own, from your own insecurities? If it's coming from your own insecurities, it will push people away because it will feel fake and it will feel inauthentic. If it's genuine and it is truly who you are, enjoy it and embrace it. But I think the key to really enjoying and embracing it means that you have to come with something else because a lot of guys that are nice guys brand themselves as that and nothing else and then they get frustrated why they're put in the friend zone and then they get frustrated as to why women don't want to take it any further than them. Look at Paul Rudd. He comes across as a nice guy, but the other thing that Paul Rudd has is a slightly dry and a slightly sarcastic sense of humor that you see in a lot of his films. And I think it's that blend. It's the confidence that the sense of humor represents combined with the niceness that he offers as well. And I think that's a part of what makes him so attractive to women. The second thing which I think makes Paul Rudd so attractive is that he really shows that aging well is a really powerful weapon if you're a man. So I've heard a lot of people say that men tend to age better than women and for the record I don't think that is true. The reality is is that if you were to go out, if you were to go into a shopping mall, if you were to go into a grocery store, if you were going to a, gonna go to a bar or anywhere like that, a place where there is a lot of men, you would see that the average man in their 50s does not have a full head of hair. The average man in their 50s is not in great athletic shape and the average man in their 50s is not wearing stylish, fashionable clothing. Most men when they get to 50 plus are beginning to experience a degree of hair loss, they've put on a lot of weight and they tend to wear clothes that favour comfort rather than clothes that favour style. So when people talk about men ageing well, it just becomes very easy to cherry pick and very easy to find people that you can use in a straw man argument. The reason I think a lot of people think that men age better than women is the fact that there is just more pressure put on women to age well. So if you're a guy and you are aging well and you're in your 40s and you're in your 50s and people are telling you that you look good, enjoy it, celebrate it, because you've already put yourself in a tiny, tiny percentage of men. But if you're a younger guy or you're a guy that's beginning to think about aging, this is great too, because now you're in pole position to really think about making the best of yourself as you get older. And this is definitely something that I've become a lot more aware of since turning 30. I'm 32 now, but it's something that I've been aware of for a couple of years. As I look around and I look at a lot of people that I went to school with and I look at a lot of my friends, a lot of them are beginning to lose their hair. A lot of them are beginning to put on a bit of weight. 
And for me, it just really reinforces that the best way to age well is actually prevention rather than cure. So if you're a younger guy and you wanna age well, stay on top of things. Make sure that you don't get too out of shape. Pay attention to what you eat. If you're worried about losing your hair, look into things that you can do in order to prevent that. If you're going bald, try rocking a buzz cut, see what that looks like. But essentially, when you're a man and you're beginning to think about growing up and you're beginning to think about looking good as you're getting older, really think about what you can do in order firstly to own and develop your own authentic style, but also think about what you can really do to stay in control of that so that things do not slip. It is really powerful when you see an older guy aging well too, because a lot of the times the older guys work through his baggage, he's worked through his shit, he's controlled, he's measured, and he's got confidence. And on top of that, if he's got all of those things and then he combines it with the looks, it's a really powerful, attractive combination. And I think it's something that we don't realize that we've actually got as much control over the, as we do. So pay attention to it, think about the future, think about how you're aging. And I think just like Paul Rudd, you'll be able to stand out as an attractive older guy. The third thing that I think it shows is that you can actually be a relatively average looking guy and be seen as really, really sexy. So when I say average, I'm not saying that Paul Rudd is average looking, but what I mean is as, as time has progressed, we get exposed more and more to beautiful people. This will be what you see all over your Instagram and all over your social media, and this will be what you see on reality TV shows all the time. The reality in the world now is that beauty will always get rewarded, and this will be done in terms of public exposure, but this will be done in terms of social media algorithms as well. And I think what's generally tending to happen is the more time progresses, we begin to normalize, normalize beauty more and more, and we begin to set these abnormally high standards. And it's kind of crazy, because you are really looking at people that are in the 0.01 percentage of attractive people in the world. So what Paul Rudd winning this award actually just shows is that you can be a conventional looking guy and people will still find you really sexy. If you look online and you try and find out Paul Rudd's height, it's listed anywhere between five foot nine and five foot 11. So a perfectly average, but perfectly respectable height. But of course, I think people would look at that now and people would decide that that's short because they're so used to seeing these six foot plus men plastered everywhere. But what Paul Rudd winning that shows is that you do not need to be that. You absolutely do not need to be that. It is okay to be of average height and it is okay to be of average build. Because again, Paul Rudd is not someone that you think of as being particularly muscular and Paul Rudd's identity is not based around his body. So he is a conventional, regular looking, average height guy that people still find really sexy. And for you guys that sit within that category, that should be something that you find really encouraging and something that you find really positive because it allows you to take away some of that pressure and really focus on the other things that are particularly important when it comes to being attractive. So maybe just, maybe just do a bit of a mental note, maybe recognize that you don't need to place these high pressure standards on yourself and maybe just think of the fact that a sense of humor, a good outlook on life, positivity are much more important both for your happiness but also much more important to the overall attraction process than just beauty in itself. And the fourth and final thing that I think that we can learn from this is that a sense of mystery and a sense of intrigue is always something that will be very attractive to most people. I was actually thinking about this and I was actually having a conversation about this the other day, but if you look at a lot of young men, a lot of them carry themselves in a very vain, narcissistic, self-obsessed way. You can even see it in the way that they walk, but you can definitely see it in the way that they talk and how they carry themselves on a day-to-day -day basis with people. But I actually think it's becoming even worse because in a lot of cases you can see this all over their social media platforms when they're posting very vain, very in your face and very, very frequent pictures that really just show that they want the adulation and the likes from people that they've probably never met. Unfortunately, as I say this, I know that this is definitely something that I've been guilty of as well. So as I say it, I can definitely relate to the feelings as to why you do that. But by contrast, Paul Rudd doesn't do that. Paul Rudd doesn't actually have any social media at all. And I think that firstly that speaks to a genuine self-confidence, but I think in the particular case that we're talking about in this video, it really just shows that holding a little bit back is really attractive. Just having a little bit of mystery and just leaving people to wonder what you're truly like is really, really attractive as well. Because of course the mind will want to know more. The mind will want to process it a little bit more. And if there's a little bit of mystery and you hold something back, 
people will instinctively begin to wonder what that something is. So this is what I recommend you do. Open up your social media pages and look at those pictures that you've posted and ask yourself what you would really think of yourself if you didn't know you. Would you think you come across as a genuinely cool guy or would you just think that you come across as a little bit of a vain, self-obsessed guy? But think about it because I guarantee that making a few changes across your social media will definitely change how you appear to most people. But go one step further than that. The next time you have an important conversation with someone or the next time you're around someone and you feel that little need to stand up a bit taller and you feel that little need to put on a little bit of a front, ask yourself why that is. Are you doing that because that's genuinely who you are? Or are you doing that because it's coming from a place of insecurity? Because if it's coming from a place of insecurity, this will speak to a fact that you feel the need to people please and you feel the need to look good to everybody. And the reality with the need to look good and the putting on the front of looking good is that it will do the opposite. You may think that people see you as this really confident guy, but the reality is people see you as the opposite and people will see straight through you. So examine it, ask yourself these questions and then think about what you can really do in order to come across firstly as the most genuine version of yourself, but also as the most confident version of yourself because it will probably only take a few very minor changes. So thank you so much for watching this video. I actually find these types of videos really fascinating to shoot because I think when we're talking about attraction, we're best served looking at real life examples in the world and thinking about what we can learn from them. If you like this video, please can I ask you to click like and subscribe down below. If you really liked it, I am now offering one-on-one -on -one coaching at the website also down below. But as always guys, nothing but love. Take care and I'll see you all in the next one.